we a group of reform-minded lawmakers committed towards using the instrument of lawmaking to reform Nigeria and our political process. Constitutional and electoral reform has been a burning topic in Nigeria since independence from Britain in 1960. Over the past 50 years, the controversy has led to unrest and a deepening of religious and ethnic divide. We should not be afraid to meet and discuss our problems, challenges, fears, aspiration, and prospects as a people. We should not discuss in fear, and we should never fear to discuss. Today, we are taking a crucial step that will further strengthen our understanding, expand the frontiers of our inclusiveness, deepen our bond as one people under God, and build a strong support that will deepen our democracy and the electoral system. We are once again at the threshold of history. History has presented us with the chance to redefine and redesign our political landscape in a direction that will strengthen the bonds of unity, enhance the processes of democratic consolidation, strengthen the structures so as to solidify those values that promote democracy, good governance, and good neighborliness, and open boundless opportunities for, our, for all Nigerians to be and to feel that are part of the evolving political process and social economic advancement. This is equally in line with our realization that our current political arrangement has some identified distortion, defects, and limitations that call for urgent, focus, and realistic attention. Hence, this initiative on political and electoral reform. Our history as a nation shows very clearly that we have been through some difficult times. We have missed great opportunities. We as lawmakers of like minds and committed to the 10th House agenda of building a strong democracy that works for all using legislative instruments. And let us at this point appreciate our speaker, Tajuddin Abbas, and his able deputy speaker, deputy speaker Benjamin Carlo, for the commitment they have shown in keeping to their promises that they will work with all stakeholders towards strengthening of laws via constitutional amendments, which gave us the confidence to step forward with our only two contributions that, if considered, will help build a stronger Nigeria where justice, equity, and good governance shall reign supreme. It is our desire to notify the general public that as part of our firm commitment to see a new and working Nigeria, an effective and efficient nation where justice and equity reign supreme, we a group of over 30 reform-minded lawmakers from different political parties who have come together and committed to ensuring a working Nigeria using legislative instruments with, within our power to ensure the reduction of cost of governance and campaigns, unite our country, ensure a seamless transition and continuity, uninterrupted development, justice, equity, and independence of INEC, including the efficient use of state resources, tackling our nepotism and corruption in our electoral process. There is no doubt that our country is in desperate need of a long-lasting solution to our economic situation, insecurity, disunity, weak institutions, weak health care and education sector, and waste of state resources. We have now reached a critical phase where that what is at stake is the very survival of Nigeria as one political and economic unit. We must rise to the challenge, and what we do with this opportunity given to us by our people matters a lot. We, the reformers, elected representative of the people from different political parties and strong like minds, are committed on proving that we are fully capable of managing our affairs together as a nation. Hence, as the first step in, co in our commitment, we are presenting to the public views and proposals which we are pushing on the floor of the 10th Assembly. Most of them have gone through first reading. These views will touch on every aspect of development in all sectors of our economy and well-being as a nation. These views, which are 50 in numbers, most of them have gone through first reading. But today, we are starting with public unveiling of six of them, while the remaining will come in the weeks ahead. It ranges from governance, economic restructuring, security, justice sector reform, to social views that will target unifying our nation and ensuring long-lasting peace and national cohesion. The reformers are cognizant of the fact that Nigeria in times past has deliberated on and accepted some of the proposals in the views. We have presented that have been presented in several reform process, including the Ways Electoral Reform, Ken Namani Electoral Reform, the Udoji Civil Service Reform, the Confab Report, the Abbasinger, Jonathan, IBB and Apache reform efforts and several others. These works by eminent Nigerians, including lawmakers in the past, have been long abandoned despite the time and resources committed to them. 
It is time we revisited those reports, adopt some of the silent proposal, and adjust them to fit the current realities. Therefore, the bills presented today will address that proposal. On governance, On governance and political restructuring, we are seeking alteration to the 1999 Constitution as amended with the bill we have that have gone through first reading, seeking to amend the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to create a single term of six years for the office of the President and State Governors, recognize Nigeria's siege of political zones, and provide for the rotation of the office of president, state governor, and local government chairman among the inherent regions and zones, and also to provide for elections in one day. Now, And also that flows into the electoral act. We are also seeking for uh, an amendment to provide that election to the offices of the president, state governors, national assembly, state taxes of assembly, and FCT area council shall be conducted simultaneously on the same date, which is to be determined by INEC in consultation with the national assembly. What we are seeking here is that instead of wasting money going for elections from one Saturday to another, that the country can gain more if all elections are held in one day. The advantage in this is that there's going to be high turnout of voters on election day. There's going to be high level of vigilance from voters. And once the first result is announced at the lower level of the elections, the accreditation remains the same and cannot change by the time you get to the presidency. So single day election will save us resources will bring more participation and will ensure the credibility of the electoral process. Also, the other one is, the third one is a bill seeking to amend the electoral act to provide for the hearing and determination of, of all election petitions by the re respective election petition tribunal and the appellate court in accordance with specified timelines before the swearing in of successful candidates at the election. And also, a 14 days deadline for issuance of CTC of election materials to petitioners after the announcement of the result. And we're also pushing for a one year imprisonment for non compliance against the REC or any consigned electoral officer plus seven years imprisonment without, without option of a fine for any returning officer who declares a false result, result not uploaded to the server or via the INEC electronic transmission devices, including results that the accreditation figures didn't tally with the number of votes cast. Also included in our proposal is conclusion of all pre-election matters 30 days before the date of election. It's important that we solve this once and for all, that the election cannot hold and people are still in court battling over who is the candidate the people voted for. Voters must have the power to know who they are voting for. Hence, pre-election matters must be concluded before we go into voting. Now, it's also important that um, those who lost the election as a result of false declaration by an electoral officer, can now, under the new proposal, have a right to bring an action personally against that electoral officer who violated the electoral act in damages and in prosecution. Now, the key highlight of this political and electoral reform, like we have just read, it's focusing on, uh, like I said before, we have other ones on economic reform, social reforms, and so on and so forth, which are going to come later, but we're taking off with this, is that this energy we spend in battling over which of the zones should produce issues of inclusion and so on and so forth, and the attendant costs can be waived 
if we all agree that power should rotate between north and the south and among the six geopolitical zones. And also, the amount of money and distraction that goes into seeking for second term and how politicians, because they want to get a second term, will, will not be concentrating much on what they are supposed to do. We now said, let's have a CCA single term so that once you're elected, you know that you have a mandate to run for six years without fearing anybody or anything, as long as you're in line with the provision of the law. And that also goes with ensuring that the, credit, the electoral process is credible with all elections holding in a single day. And then one will say, if we say it's a six-year single term, what if the president dies? And then are we going to have a repeat of what happened in the time of Jonathan when another person comes from another zone and he might distort that zoning arrangement? We have put provisions in place to ensure that when we say it's six years single term for a particular zone, it remains six years and it can never change. And that is why the bill is now proposing for the position of two vice presidents. One will be a vice president for succession, which will come from the same zone with the president, and the other one will be vice president administration from the other part of the country. And what that means is that in the event of death of the president or impeachment of the president, the second vice president association assume office immediately and completes the remainder of that time and cannot seek any election. With that, if it is the turn of the north or the east and they have six years, that six years will remain six years and it will not change because even if it's impeached or even if the president dies, the second vice president association will be sworn in immediately to complete the remainder of that time. And also, in order not to incur extra costs on the country, these vice presidents will now have ministerial status, being the only vice president, being the minister, only minister from that state. So instead of having two ministers, it's going to be one minister. Once that person is elected as the vice president association, he automatically becomes minister for that state. So we are not going to spend extra costs maintaining that office. And also the issue of financial autonomy and accountability of local governments is also to ensure that that is equally uh, in place. That will also have the bill also. So we want to conclude this. We want to conclude this press conference by greeting all Nigerians of all walks of life on this historic day. Our men and women in the different sectors of the economy, our vibrant youth, persons with disabilities, our law enforcement agencies, our traditional leaders, political leaders, fathers of our communities and custodians of our cultural heritage, our religious leaders, custodians of faith and morals, our effective civil society organizations, and the media. This task ahead of us is huge and cannot be achieved without you. It is, on, it is a task for all of us. Our work does not go beyond taking the initiative to get them into parliament. To ensure that the bills are successful is on all of us. Call up all your representatives in the National Assembly and, so, so, and solicit their support for CCA, CCA single term presidents, rotation of the presidency between North and South and among the geopolitical zones, all elections in one day, and also, more importantly, to ensure that all those who lose the elections and seek for certificate or certified tool copies gets that within 14 days. And also to avoid the situation whereby you'll be seeking for this document and the time for filing your petition elapses. So such things will not happen again if we go by this uh, proposal. And to make sure that it's mandatory and compulsory that election results must be electronically transmitted. And whosoever transmits a result or announces a result that is not electronically transmitted or the figure does not tally with the total number of votes cast is going in for seven years imprisonment without any option of fine. Lobby, participate in the hearings and use of all manners of platforms, digital media, social media, traditional media, to advocate for the passage of this critical reform bill. Ours is a commitment to building a united, stable, and prosperous nation. And with your contribution, cooperation, and support, Nigeria can and must become a great and modern nation. We through conscience and determination, let us join hands and rededicate ourselves to the service of this great country so that it will be a place we can be proud of. We cannot afford to fail in this act, and by the grace of God, we shall succeed. 
We ultimately thank our fellow members of the Federal House of Representatives, the Tenth House, the People's House, and more importantly, the leadership of the House, led by our able speaker, Sajudin Abbas, Eyan Zazu, and Benjamin Okeze, candidate speaker, Osabri Bende, for the focused leadership and for a well researched and strategic legislative agenda that have inspired us today, even as we further seek their support in ensuring we achieve our common prosperity. We salute the Speaker for constituting the Constitutional Amendment Committee, chaired by the Deputy Speaker, who has the great capacity required in delivering the tax ahead. We have confidence in them and our colleagues that our proposal will be supported. May God bless our country and may God bless you all. Thank you. And at this juncture, 